The electrolysis section of the chemistry paper starts with question 1.9, which reads, the simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used for the purification of copper. And we can see here that this is an electrochemical cell because it has a battery or a cell where we know that the long terminal is the positive one, the short one is the negative one, which means that we have a flow of electrons that is from electrode Q towards electrode P. And so the question reads, which one of the graphs below represents the change in mass of electrodes P and Q during the purification process? And we identify this change in mass by seeing that electrode Q, since this is the one that is giving off electrode or electrons, electrode Q must therefore be the electrode that is undergoing oxidation. So what is happening here is that we have, or we would normally have the impure copper on this electrode where as it is oxidized and gives away its electrons, the copper ions would then join the solution. Those electrons are then transferred through the cell towards electrode Q, where the electrodes then attract only the pure copper where we then have reduction taking place. From this, we can see that therefore the mass of electrode P is going to be increasing while the mass of electrode Q is going to be decreasing. And we can see that both options A and C have the same setup where the mass of P is increasing and the mass of Q is decreasing. The difference here is that in A, we are saying that the electrode mass or electrode P starts with a non-zero mass, whereas option C, the mass starts at zero. Now, it's not possible for reduction to take place unless there is already something there to start with that can host those electrons for reductions to take place, which means that the mass of electrode P cannot start out as zero because reduction needs to take place on an electrode and therefore it must have mass, which means that the correct answer to question 1.9 is option A. Question 9 reads, the simplified diagram below represents an electrolytic cell used to electroplate a copper coin with silver. And here we can see that we have a silver electrode, again, the positive electrode of the battery uh, connected to the silver electrode, the negative electrode connected to the copper coin, which means that we're going to have electrons flowing from the silver electrode towards the copper coin. Those electrons flowing in that direction therefore tell us that the silver electrode is where oxidation takes place and it is therefore our anode and the electrons going towards the copper coin means that that's where reduction is going to take place, which means that that is then our cathode. Question 9.1, define the term electrolysis. And electrolysis can be defined in a number of ways. The simplest way is to say it is the chemical process in which electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. We see that because we are using a battery to create a chemical change that suits us there are other options. We can say it is the use of electrical energy to produce a chemical change, or it is decomposition of an ionic compound by means of electrical energy, or the process during which an electric current passes through a solution or ionic compound. Question 9.2, which component in the diagram indicates that this is an electrolytic cell? And the fact that there is a cell or a battery present tells us that this must be an electrolytic cell. And so the answer to 9.2 is either cell or battery. Strictly speaking, this is a cell. It only contains one positive and one negative electrode where a battery contains multiple cells. Question 9.3, write down the name or formula of the electrolyte. Now we can see in this cell, in the setup, we are going to have silver ions that have the electrons removed from them and are then attracted towards the copper coin that has those electrons and therefore undergo reduction on that copper coin, which is what coats it in silver. The electrolyte therefore must contain silver ions and it must contain something else that does not react. Now there are a number of options here. The most common one is nitrate as a negative ion that does not react, which means that the answer to 9.3, we can write out either name or the formula. So 
silver nitrate, AgNO3, or we can write it out. There are other options, silver ethanoate, uh, silver fluoride, silver perchlorate. There are a number of options here where the nitrate ion is one that generally doesn't react. So I prefer to use that as my electrolyte. Question 9.4, how will the concentration of the electrolyte change during electroplating? Choose increases, decreases, or remains the same, and give a reason for the answer. So what we need to see here is we need to see that although the silver electrode is undergoing oxidation, and every time one electron is removed, one silver ion is added to the solution, but at the same time, that electron is transferred to the copper coin, which then attracts one silver ion that then leaves solution. So what we have here is a process where every time one silver ion joins the solution, another silver ion leaves the solution, which implies that the concentration remains the same. So we say that the concentration remains the same. And then the reason for that is because our rate of oxidation is equal to the rate of reduction. The rate at which silver ions are joining the solution is equal to the rate at which they are leaving the solution. Question 9.5, write down the balanced equation for the half reaction that takes place at the silver electrode. And so we would use our table of standard reduction potentials here to show that we start out with silver and then that breaks apart to form silver ions and one electron. A question like this when marked according to the guidelines, the definition for electrolysis, again, as listed here, any one of these where the underlined words are most important. Question 9.2, the component that makes this an electrolytic cell is a cell or a battery. Question 9.3, any electrolyte that made sense, pretty much anything that was silver that was combined with a negative ion would be the correct answer there. Question 9.4, explain what happens to the concentration. One mark for saying that it's, uh, it remains the same and one mark for some kind of explanation where we say that the rate of oxidation is equal to the rate of reduction. And then finally, our half reaction that takes place at the electrode is the half reaction in which silver breaks apart to form silver ions and a single electron. <laughs>